We are looking at the IT prac exam from the June 2019. This is not the November, this is the June 2019 paper. And this is the first video, so we're starting with question one. Before we start, just a reminder that you're going to probably get an EXE file that uh, will be that's the one that you're going to be needed to use and when you double click on it it's going to ask you for a password and that's where you'll get your password from so make sure you type it in exactly like this and then it will extract the files for you in a folder like this so you'll see all the different files that you need so we're going to start with question one um, question one is normally your grade 10 and a bit of grade 11 works some very easy stuff so let's have a look first of all first question 1.1 let's go into it uh, it's quite a random question because it's about random numbers. So write the code to do the following. It must generate a random number that's between 100 and 120. Inclusive means 100 and 120 could be possible numbers that are selected. And we must display this number in an edit box. That seems quite simple. So let's go and look at the code. So there's our program. So when we click on that button, we need to generate a random number. So I'm going to go and create a variable for this. So let's go and so our number of type an integer so how do we generate a random number well there are two ways of doing this that you might know the first one is the most popular way is probably random range so if I use random range now first of all you'll notice it doesn't go red if it goes red that means you haven't added math at the top and I've got a funny feeling they've done it for us aha look they've done it for us so if your random range doesn't work just remember to go to the top and add math to the library at the top there but they've done it for us so that's great and then just look at when you press the bracket it tells you from this number to this number so we want to go from 100 to 120 now there's a little trick here we want to go from 100 to 120 so that's how we put don't don't put a dash between them that's not how you put two parameters you put a comma between your parameters but just a little tip when you use random range it includes that number but it goes up until one before that number so we want 120 so we must go always one plus the upper limit so we're going to go till 121 and that's going to generate our random number and then we need to display it in edt i'll press control spacebar to see all the options and there should be an edt random option when i can go down why won't it allow me to go down come go down there we go uh, there's random number dot text and we are going to put the random number in there but remember this is a integer and text is a string so we must convert it from an int to a string the other option the other way of doing this random number is our num is equal to random so you could use random if you want I'll just take this so you could say random and then you give it a particular number now if I now the way random works at norm so if I give the number six it goes from naught until five okay so that's how it would work so this is the little trick if you want from 100 to 21 and you want to use the random option no not 100 to 21 you want 100 we want sorry 100 100 that's long 100 to 120 why won't my one work there boom there we go 100 to 120 if you want that how many numbers are there between 100 and 120 you might think there are 20 but there's actually 21 because we want to include 100 so 100 technically starts at naught and then one two three there are 21 random numbers between 100 and 120 so we want 21 random numbers a possibility of 21 possible numbers and then you add whatever the lowest number must be so we want the lowest number to be 100 so i'm going to add 100 so what this is doing is random 21 will generate a random number from naught to 20 right and then the 100 will be added onto it so the lowest number will be a naught plus 100 which would be 100 and the highest number will be a 20 plus 100 which would be 120 and therefore it works so that's the other way of doing it if you want to do it so if you do random range then you must always go from the lowest number to the highest number plus one that's the one option and then remember to add math at the top add add math at the top but if you're going to use the random function you just in the bracket say how many different possibilities are there how many different numbers are possible there are 21 possible numbers and then you add whatever the lowest number is so those are your two options ready for that and that should work and we run it boom, boom, boom. and when it compiles we can click on random number 
And there we go. And if I keep clicking on it, you'll see it's all a bunch of random numbers. There we go. And you saw 120 was included. So there we go. So now it works. Okay. That's great. Now, just a little tip before we get into the next question. If something goes wrong with this question and you can't get it right and there's syntax errors here and you can't move on to the next question, you can move on to the next question, but you can't run it. What I suggest that you do is that you use the curly brackets on the previous question. Just between the two, just get rid of all the code for the previous question by using the curly brackets. So that way you can compile your 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 program for 1.2 to see if it works. But then just remember at the end of the exam to go back and take them away if your code doesn't work. At least that way you can test your other questions if your first question is giving you errors. Okay, so there's that one. Let's go to the next question. Next question. School dance has many learners. They participate in there and they need to determine how long it'll take to introduce all the participants. So if there are less than or equal to 20, it'll take 2.5 minutes per person 20 to 50 or just before 50 is uh, or 22 to 50 more than 20 sorry until 50 is 2.3 minutes and then more than 50 is two minutes okay and then we must extract the number of participants and calculate how long it'll take to introduce them and they want us to display both the minutes and the minutes they say rounded up so rounded up almost so if it's 32.5 must go up to 33 if it's 48.3, it must go up to 49. So that's the two answers we must do. So let's do this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do on question two, if you look here, question two, we're going to get from EDT participants. So I need to get that number in. So the participants, that would be an integer. So our participants, obviously our part of type integer. And how do we get that? We're going to say our part is equal to whatever's in the edit box of participants. What property of the edit box? The text property. But the text property is a string and our part is an integer. So we've converted from a string to an int. And that way we can get the input done. Okay, so there we go. That Our participants is done. Okay. Now, depending on the participants, depends on how many minutes per minute. Okay, so I'm going to actually get this number. Either it must be a 2.5 or a 2.3 or a 2. So we're going to use an if statement for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try extract. Now, let's just double check. That is a real number because we need real. So I'm going to make a real number. What are we going to call it? R. What is this? Minutes per participant. So minutes per participant. Min, min PB is a real number. So what? how do we work this out? Well, we first have to check the R part. If the R part is what do they say if it is less than or equal to 20 if our part is less than or equal to 20 do exactly what they just said if that's true then r min bb is going to equal to 2.5 was it 2.5 what was it 2.5 oh my memory is good today so 2.5 but if it's more than that so else so if i get to this part then i know that i'm only dealing with numbers that are bigger than 20 so i don't need to check if it's less if it's bigger than 20 i already know if i get to this else part that it's already bigger than 20 if that's the case we want to make it 2.3 but it must be less than or equal to 50. so i must do another check if our part is less than equal to 50. now i'm not checking if it's greater than 20 because i know if i get to this else part then i'm already above 20. Then R min PP is going to be 2.3, I think it was. Else, if it's not less than 20 and it's not less than 50, then it has to be bigger than 50. It has to be bigger than 50. That's the only other possible number. Then that's the last check. So then we can say else R min PP is equal to 2. You'll notice there's no semicolon there. Why? Because there's an else. There's no semicolon before and else. Now, if you use begins and ends, you might have had something that looks like this. I like to use begins and ends because it looks a little bit better. But then obviously then you do need your semicolon there because this is the line that doesn't need a semicolon and so on and so on. I'll just change it with begins and ends. But you don't have to if it's just one thing that you're doing. But try getting the habit of using begins and ends because a lot of times you do multiple things. And if you don't use begins and ends, you sometimes forget about that one thing has been done by the if statement. That you want lots of things being done. 
So that's the first thing. So we now know what the rate is per minute rate, minute rate per participant. Blah, blah, blah. Lots of words here. So now that we know the rate and we know how many participants there are, we just multiply those two numbers together. We take the 13 and we multiply by 2.5 to get that particular number of minutes. So that's easy to work out the number of minutes. So we actually need the number of minutes and the minutes run up. So I need almost like two variables. I need the minutes. I'm going to call it our total minutes. And then I'm going to say R rounded. That's the rounded. So let's work out. How do I work out the total? R total is equal to the number of participants multiplied by our minimum minutes per person or per participant you just multiply those two together and you'll get some sort of number like 32.5 or whatever like that and then we want to display that we want to display that in that edit box which is the edt minutes edit box and we want to display it to two decimal places so i'm saying edt minutes dot text is going to be whatever our total minutes is but we want to display it to two decimal places i'm going to use the so, and this is a, a real and this is a string so we want to convert it from a real or float to string however we want to display it to two decimal places so we can use the float to string f which needs four things the variable that we want to convert then a format which is ff fixed in this case and then we need i don't care what this next number is i want to make it like an eight but the second number is the number that we have decimal place which is a two that's the one i do care about and then i need to work out that three point or thirty two point five i need to round it up so r rounded is equal to the total minutes but how do i round it up i don't want to round it because round it if it was 32.3 it would round it down i want to always round it up so I'm going to use the seal function. Right, the seal function doesn't work. Then remember to add math at the top. But seal is like ceiling. It takes it to the ceiling. If you wanted to round it down, you would take it to the floor. So you would use the floor function. Yeah, we want to go to the ceiling. And then in EDT rounded. Is it rounded? Minutes. Min, min's round. There we go. Dot text. We want to put this R rounded in there. But... What is this? We want to convert it from a float to a string. Because this is a float and this is a string. Well, let's see. Maybe we might have to. Seal might bring it, uh, make it an integer, to be honest. But let's just double check. I think it does make an integer. But I think it'll be work because it's going to have no decimal number. So let's try it out. So if I type in, let's go look at our options. 13. So if I type in 13. Calculate minutes. Do I get the same answers? 32, 33? Yes. And if I type in uh, 50, 115, yep, that's correct. And I get 51. I get 102 and 102. And then they give me another example of 17. Let's try one more. 17, 42.5 and 43. That seems to be working. It looks like it's doing what it needs to be doing. So there we go. And it's explained it correctly. There we go. That's the first two questions. In the next video, we'll do... 1.3 for the other videos in this exam paper look in the description below or you can go to our playlist on our youtube channel click on that like button leave us subscribe we'd love to hear from you and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way